All right, it's great to be with you all tonight. I'm so glad you can join us. Most of the time we do this, it's in the morning. Uh, we're doing it tonight, so this is a special, obviously as you can tell, it's a special session, Facebook Live. It's always a blast to be with you whenever we can do this. Uh, so we're going to start off, we're going to put our goals uh, that we're looking at tonight, uh, the different things that we're going to be going over with our uh, very first slide. First thing I want to do is I want to look at the blessings that we have going on in our lives. So I want you to be thinking about the things that you are currently celebrating in your life or those things that you're looking forward to celebrating. Maybe you've got a certain date set that's on your calendar, you're looking forward to that. Uh, if you get a chance, uh, type in some of those things that you're either currently celebrating or some things that you're looking forward to. You've got some faith and some hope that in the near future you will be celebrating. Because we're going to be talking about milestones to get started. There's some other things on the list too that are on that first slide that you'll see. Uh, we're going to work our way through all that. We're going to be together for about half an hour. I'm going to try to move through this rather quickly, but we're going to be talking about uh, one of the reasons we're gathered today. We have a big celebration, a milestone we hit as a church at Acts 433, so I can't wait to tell you all about that. So while you were thinking about blessings in your life, I wanted to, to say that uh, we are happy to be celebrating four years as a church. Uh, that's not the main reason we, we're gathering it on this uh, live session. But in two weeks, in about just a little less than two weeks, it'll be four years since Acts 4.33 came into being. A lot has happened in those four years. And we are just uh, so happy from all the support we've had from so many different people over the years. And anniversaries is always a good time to look back uh, at the very th various things that God has blessed us with in our time uh, you know, leading up to the anniversary. So do we have anyone who is celebrating anniversaries this month? Uh, maybe uh, you have a, a wedding anniversary. Uh, maybe you have a work anniversary. I get updates on, um, uh, I'm trying to think of what the, the site is, that uh, the work site, whatever it is. Uh, Diane, what is it? What's that called? The work one that gives you? Indeed. Indeed. Not indeed. No. Something else. There LinkedIn. Is LinkedIn, yes. LinkedIn gives me these updates saying, so-and-so has worked eight years at such-and-such -such company. That's kind of neat. Anyone celebrating a work anniversary or maybe even a birthday? Birthday's a great, great reason to celebrate this month. Go ahead and let us know. We'd like to celebrate that with you. Um, but I think anniversaries are great because they remind us to think back and reflect on the various ways God has blessed us with. And I thought, what better way than to, uh, to really share what God has been doing as a result of uh, your generosity and you partnering with us in this ministry of sharing the gospel uh, throughout the world. Uh, one of the, my favorite verses is Romans 8.28 that says, and we know that all things work together for good to those who are called according to his purpose. And uh, I can tell you that where we're at today was not part of the original plan. Now, we had written down things. We even had a, a initial vision statement we recreated. And, you know, we thought things would go a certain way, and uh, that's just not how things have gone. And maybe that's true in your life. Maybe um, as you're celebrating some big milestone, some big thing in your life, uh, I, I'm sure if you look back at how you got to that point, it probably wasn't a straight line. There was probably some things that happened that were a little bit unexpected, because uh, that's how life is. But the, the beauty is that in all things, God's working those together for our good. So I've learned uh, that, you know, these things that happen and things that come up against us, uh, that we should uh, be thanking God that he is with us and he's working everything out, even the things that are, are very difficult, the persecutions and the trials for our good. Uh, there is a comic I love. I want to share this with you. I think this goes real well with it. Um, it is... Uh, this comic of this donkey, and this donkey is caught in a well, and the farmer has no idea how he's going to get this donkey out. So he just thinks, well, this is it. I'm just going to bury my donkey. So he gets a shovel and starts throwing uh, dirt into the well to bury the donkey. Well, the donkey just shakes off the dirt, and every time he does that, uh, the earth beneath him gets a little bit higher and a little bit higher, and at the end, the very thing that was meant to bury him, the thing that was going to do him in, uh, is the very thing that he uses to walk up out of that well that has him trapped. So I love that. That's kind of a, 
a, a visual illustration of Romans 8.28. Uh, I found that as you thank God for what he's done, as you sing his praise, pra as you sing his praises in the storm, it's like shaking the dirt off, uh, like the donkey did in that in that illustration. And it really just gets us ready that much quicker to receive what God has in store for us next. Uh, it's, it's like that platform getting created to just to help us step on into that next thing. So praise God, celebrate, uh, look back on his past faithfulness, have hope in your future, and know that God's working all things together for your good. Uh, it's like shaking that dirt off and getting you ready. So talking about milestones, um, Go ahead if you haven't had a chance yet and uh, type some of those out, some of those things that you're looking to celebrate or that you are celebrating. Diane can let me know if there's any uh, that we have yet. But I always think it's good to take time, re reflect, and thank God for his many blessings. In fact, uh, it says in 1 Chronicles 16.34 that we should give thanks to the Lord for he is good and his love endures forever. So, you know, another way to think about this, uh, I, maybe I should have started off with this, is um, a fill-in-the-blank sentence. If I was to ask you in the next year, and then you would fill out the rest, in the next year you will be whatever that is. What is that? What do you think that would be? In the next year I will be, you know, hopefully you've had a chance to think about that. If you haven't, this is a, a good night to do that. What, what do you hope to accomplish uh, in the year 2020, the end of 2019 going to 2020. Um, whatever it is, I can guarantee if you were to write that out and say, you know, I'd like to get from here to there. I'd like to uh, move up in my job. I'd like to spend more time with my family. I'd like to take a vacation to this place. Um, there are some things that you can do to see that uh, come into reality, but there are things outside of our control that will uh, interfere, that will make it difficult, that may actually get us to not believe that we could actually see that thing that we hope to happen come to fruition. Uh, there is a verse in 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18 that says, Be joyful always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Um, so, as you're thinking about that thing and you go, you know, is this God's will that I actually see this happen? Um, you know, I don't understand why all of this stuff is going on when I clearly desire this, this other thing to happen. Well, I can tell you uh, what God's will is for you with whatever you're facing is that you will continue to give him thanks, to be joyful and to pray in, in, in all these things that you face. And, and the only way that that's possible is if you truly do believe that God is working all things together for your good. Uh, and I wanted to set that kind of as the stage because the testimony of Acts 4.33 is we've had setbacks. We've had goals that we've set that we haven't uh, quite arrived at the way we thought we would or in the timing we thought we would would but it's all going to make sense as we progress why I'm bringing all of that up but uh, if we believe that even in these setbacks God's doing something out of it in these trials and temptations God's preparing us and, and and God's leading forth that next thing and we're learning stuff in this season and it's getting us ready uh, we can give thanks and we can be joyful even in the persecution. Uh, and, and of course, it'll just continue to spur us on to pray. So, um, and that's, I, 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 you know, I almost get uh, brought to tears when I think about this, where we've come from in this video that I'm making right now, uh, and how God has orchestrated these steps and he's ordained it, and he's, he's brought about this, this milestone that I'm going to share in just a moment. Uh, Nelson Mandela said, Remember to celebrate the milestones as you prepare for the road ahead. Now, as a believer, I can tell you that the milestone says, This is what God did in my past, and I can't wait to see what He is going to do in my future. Um, besides uh, four years, coming on four, uh, fourth year existing as a church, 
uh, we've hit a milestone, and this is, this is the milestone I wanted to share. And it might not sound like a, that big of a deal, but for, for us, it, it truly is. And it's a result of all of your hard work out there. Um, let's see, I must have missed it. Oh, yeah. We have um, hit 1,000 subscribers on YouTube. So, yay, I'm going to go ahead and put a post out uh, either later tonight or tomorrow about that. And it's wonderful, and it was a lot of hard work. You wouldn't believe how difficult it is to get a thousand people to actually follow you on YouTube. Um, and that doesn't even take into consideration those who tune in on Facebook and, and watch us on Facebook as well. Um, and so one of the things I wanted to point out in this video is that if you only watch on Facebook... Uh, and you haven't subscribed to YouTube, you're, you're missing out. And, and those individuals, we have two camps. We have our Facebook audience and we have our YouTube audience. And they seem to be complete, two different camps, completely different people. And both of them are missing out on a little bit. So I wanted to show you what that is real quick. So on YouTube or on Facebook, there are some pros there, okay? The great thing about Facebook is you can watch it live. Uh, you can do it on YouTube too, but we only broadcast live on Facebook. So you're watching me sneeze and cough and itch my eye right as it happens and all the silly stuff that happens. You see it live uh, and, and that's, that's exciting and it's always great. I, I have a tough time watching sports games that have already happened. Uh, even if I'm in a bubble and there's no way I'll hear the score, it's like it's already done. So being on Facebook, uh, you can watch us live. The other great thing is you can invite friends. Uh, you've got a whole list of people that are there. You can invite friends to watch. It is so powerful. And you can also do this third thing, which we're going to talk about how to do that later and what that, what that is. You can host a watch party. So there's some pros to Facebook. Now, if you're on YouTube... You're not watching our service live, so that, that, that would be a con, but one of the things is every single message gets archived onto YouTube, so you never miss a message. I mean, I know we're humans. We've got things that come up. We need to be here, or we need to tune in on Sunday, and, and something happens, and we can't do it. Well, if you're on YouTube, and you've subscribed, and, and in the video uh, description, we have a link how to friend us on Facebook, and also how to subscribe to YouTube. Um, you'll never miss a message if you have subscribed to us on YouTube. The other thing is, you'll get an email notification telling you, hey, they did something wacky. They did a, a video on Wednesday night. I didn't know anything about that. That came out from left field. You're not going to miss it. It's going to let you know. Uh, another thing I love about it is, you might need encouragement on a Tuesday. You know, you've had a hard Monday. You go, man, I could use another message. I could use some time in the Word. Well, you've got to over 250 messages growing every week that are already archived there. And you can search by scripture if you're doing a Bible study or by subject matter. So you might go, man, I feel depressed this morning. I am having a rough morning. So you can type in depression and search our videos for any video that has a keyword depression, and you could have a message that speaks to what you are going through that Tuesday morning. So YouTube has its pros as well. So I would encourage you, if you're on Facebook, wonderful, subscribe to YouTube. If you've subscribed to our YouTube channel, catch us live, it's awesome. Uh, you get to interact with people that are tuning in live. It's, it's powerful and you can invite your friends and you can even host a watch party. So friend us on Facebook if you haven't done so yet. Um, so I want to put the, uh, the, what it looks like, the YouTube link. Uh, it has the red subscribe button. So if you go to youtube.com backslash words of grace, uh, that is our YouTube channel name, Words of Grace. It is a ministry of Acts 433 Church. Uh, if you click on the red subscribe button, it will say you're subscribed. And you will get email notifications of when we post a video. So that's what you do. It's as simple as going to that. Find that red button and click on it and you are good to go. So I wanted to show you how to do that. But one of the things I wanted to talk about uh, this morning is I believe that by January of 2021, so that's a little bit more than a year, 
I believe that we are going to reach the 5,000 subscriber mark on YouTube. You might go, well, not the greatest mathematician, but if you're celebrating four years as a church and it took you four years to get 1,000 subscribers, wouldn't that mean that it will take around 20 years for you to get to 5,000 subscribers? Now, I know what you're thinking, uh, but that is not the case. That's not how this works. Um, the more people subscribe and the more people share, the more people hear the beauty of the gospel, the more lives are transformed, and the more people begin to subscribe and the channel grows and grows and grows. In fact, just recently, as we were approaching the 1,000 subscriber mark, YouTube has started promoting our channel on other people's channels. We don't even do anything about that. Already, just in the last uh, month and a half, 25% of our videos that are watched are not watched by somebody that we know. They are watched as a recommendation on someone else's channel. That's just going to continue to grow and grow as everyone here continues to share and continues to get people to tune in and to subscribe. The more people that do that, the bigger difference it makes, the more YouTube takes notice, and the more lives are impacted by the gospel. I mean, I was on YouTube uh, just uh, the other day, and I'm on it all the time with, with Evan and Ava and Isla, and I'm, I watch these ridiculous videos that are on there. They like watching how to make slime and all this, this weird stuff. And I'm like, how many subscribers does this how to make slime video have? It has over a million subscribers. How, how to make slime. So if a how to make slime video can have a million subscribers, uh, I believe uh, through the help of the Holy Spirit with all of you, we, we can do way better than, than that. Um, and so today we're celebrating the growth that God has given us online. It was never our plan to, to, to go about it this way. We thought organically we were just going to grow and grow and grow uh, with physical uh, people coming physically here. It just hasn't been the case. Um, part of it is we have been restricted with our physical location. We have met in a, uh, at a country club, an old church. We met at a community center, uh, and now we're here, and, um, and that was part of it. There's a lot of reasons that go into it, but I believe more so than any obstacle that we faced, I believe it was a part of God's divine plan uh, to get us to think even, even bigger than reaching 100 people in Ortonville uh, for the kingdom, instead to reach a million people uh, with the gospel. And you say, wait, 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 wait. I thought you said by 2021, we're going to hit 5,000 subscribers. Well, yes, that's the case. But here, here it is. This, is. this is my life goal right now. My 10-year goal is that we are going to reach 1 million people by 2030. And, and, and then, so I know we're thinking all about how the math works out here. It took four years to reach 1,000 people. And you're getting real ambitious with 5,000 in the second year. And even if you hit 5,000 every year after that, you're nowhere near a million. Well, like I said, uh, YouTube is like a mountain. And you start with just a little snowball. And if that snowball gets enough traction, by the time it gets down to the bottom, it is just, it's just enormous in size. So um, this is what... This is what the plan is. Years, year one through four, reach a thousand people. We did it with two weeks to spare. We're ahead of the game. By year five, we want to reach 5,000. By year six, 2,500. Year seven, 100,000. Year eight, 200,000, et cetera. All the way till year 10, reaching a million people. If someone told you that you could be a part of a movement where you would see one million people reached with the gospel in 10 years, would you want to be a part of that? I, I know it gets me excited. It's something that I am all in for. I'm committed to improving. I'm committed to learning and growing and how we can make this a reality. Now, here's something to, to put out there. 
Um, well, I'll get to that in a minute. I, I don't want to get too far ahead of myself. Uh, part of the grand adventure of growing uh, is, is that we need to grow organically here in order to make that a reality. Um, actually, no, I think I'm going to go back. I want, to, I want to stay here for a minute about the million people because a million people sounds like absurd. It sounds like, like a number that's unobtainable. A couple things about that. Um, I remember when we had 10, 10 subscribers. <laughs> 10. For the longest time we had 10. And we put it out there that we really want to get 100 subscribers. And it felt like 100 was miles away. And the reason we wanted to get 100, besides it's 100 people are tuning in hearing the beauty of Jesus uh, proclaimed every week, is it, it enabled us to put these custom thumbnails which look better, which attract more people. And we didn't have a weird sounding name, youtube.com backslash vxy. 7428VC. Instead of something like that, we could be simply words of grace, whatever we wanted to be. And we got to 100, and it was like, whoa, this is incredible. And here we are, 10 times that amount. Uh, a million it, it is doable. Do you know Billy Graham? In his, and you're saying, oh, now you're going to talk about Billy Graham. Billy Graham, one man reached an estimate, estimate of 215 million people in his lifetime. And he did it without YouTube, and he did it without Facebook. And that's one man. And we are talking about a community of believers working together. In fact, our church name is, is after Acts chapter 4, verse 33. It says, with great power... The apostles continue to testify of the resurrection, the Lord Jesus Christ, and God's grace was so powerfully at work in them all. I had a, a chance to um, share the, the vision with, uh, a little bit of our church vision with a uh, Christian radio personality. And he said, ah, you've got the perfect church name. He said, it. It, it, it talks about what the mission of the church is supposed to be about. It shows a picture of what it can look like when the body of church is working together. I said, you got it. <laughs> it's too bad he lives too far away. But uh, the, the point is, together, man, we can do this. By 2030, we can reach a million people. And I hope, I hope that we can archive this video and we will look back on it. And at the 10-year mark, we actually laugh because we're at like 15 million. And we go, man, we were like, we were so far off of what God had in store. But to pull this off, I understand that we have to grow organically here, physically. Uh, I want to be able to pull off and have um, nights of worship that we can stream live. I want to be able to have... Uh, some prayer nights. I want to be able to do this on Wednesday more often. I want to have some Q&A with the pastor. Wouldn't that be cool? Have uh, all your questions pop up. Well, what about this? And You know, I've been struggling with this. I don't understand how it, what the word means when it says this. Um, I want to improve our equipment. I want to have better lighting. I want to have better cameras. I want to have staffing so we can actually make this a reality. Uh, I, I'd like to see all this. But we need people who can also worship with us physically here in Ortonville as well. Now, we're a home church, and I, I know that that sounds like it could be really weird, like everyone's in a living room staring at each other, and it's all awkward. I promise you it's not. I've got some pictures to show you of where we worship, and we've really been blessed with how beautiful the space is that we, we have. Um, the first picture I'm going to put up, I went the wrong way, is... This is our space where we meet on Sunday mornings to where we sing and we pray and we take communion and the word is preached. And, and I can tell you, uh, it is, it, it's just, it's, it's, it's an intimate space, but it is not, it is a space where if you came, you would feel very welcome and it's a warm, very warm and inviting space. We also have 
You'll notice the white door in, in, in the background there that slides open. We'll talk about this in a minute, but we have an upper loft that we're looking to convert into a children's space. Uh, we also have uh, a space that's designated for our coffee hour. And as you can see, it's, it's, it's open and there's, there's room to converse. And I didn't get the other picture, but the other wall is all windows. So you see a beautiful creek and a hill that slopes down and we've got gardens and stuff. And quite often when it's season, people leave with tomatoes or cucumbers or whatever. We're smaller, but we do our very best because we want to have all the obstacles and the distractions away so that people can come here and know how difficult life is and they can receive and they can grow. Um, and so we need people. And so if you yourself are live anywhere near Ortonville or if you have friends that are in the Ortonville area, um, you can... Uh, you can tag them on this video. You can say, uh, great church to try out. Um, or go ahead and um, if you yourself are interested, if you type the words more info church, and I will private message you uh, the service time and the location. And you could go, well, why don't you just put it on the screen now? Why don't you put the service time and the address and everything else? Well, I made that mistake in the past, you see, we've met in four different locations, and I have an old, I have old archive videos that do get watched from time to time, like really old ones, and we've had a visitor show up at an old location, because it used to say the church address in the video, and if I popped it up on this video and someone watched it, and God blessed us, and we grew, and we couldn't physically meet here anymore, and we were meeting somewhere else, I'd really hate for that to be the reality, so if you want some more info about uh, where we meet and how to get here in service time, uh, just type in more info church. Uh, we also, our worship team, if you are musically uh, gifted, we're looking for uh, uh, vocalists, we're looking for musicians. So if that's something you or someone you know uh, is really, it's your talent, that's what God has blessed you with, uh, we'd love to have you. We do have our worship team practice once a month. We get together and we have the Worship team has a meal together and, uh, and practices, and we've got, uh, got it organized really well on a Google Drive, and we get you all familiar with that, with song sheets and chord sheets and all that. And so um, if you're interested in, in, in the worship, uh, if you would type in more info music, and I can get you specific information uh, and our worship leader's contact information as well. For our children's ministry, uh, I'm going to go through this really quickly. Uh, we're, we're going to do something really exciting. Uh, right the week after Easter in 2020, from April 19th to May 17th, uh, when you tune in online, uh, it's, it's at 11 o'clock, right around 11 o'clock. That's when the message starts. Our actual worship service starts at 1030. That's when we sing. That's when we take communion. That's when we have time of prayer. Uh, but what we're going to do in this time frame from April 19th to May 17th, five weeks in a row, is we are going to uh, get kids here from the community, and we are going to do a uh, treasure hunt, finding all you need in Jesus for an hour before the service starts. We're going to feed them, too. We're going to have breakfast. It's going to be an exciting time. We're going to incorporate the kids into the service. The message I preach is going to be related to what they're learning. It's going to uh, be reinforced from the parents with what they take home. And the kids are actually going to be a part of our worship as well as we uh, conclude our service. But all of this takes volunteers. And so we need help with our children's ministry. If, if you or someone that you know is interested in children's ministry, would you type more children's info? And we'd like to uh, reach out to you for that. Uh, we need a lot of help. If you are handy and you're a handyman, type in more info handyman. Uh, we need help soundproofing our upper, room, our upper room, our loft here. We want to get that ready for April. Uh, we're going to put in a, a separate entrance to get into there. So if they have to use the bathroom, they can leave and not disrup, uh, dis, uh, disrupt service. We have a wall at the top that we need to wall in, and we've got uh, a floating floor to put in. So there's some projects that we could definitely use help with. Um, so uh, with all of that, uh, that is for people who are close to us. Now I want to speak at the last two or three minutes that I'm on here. I want to speak to those who can't be with us physically, but those who have been committed to us virtually. I want to thank you. 
Uh, you can't, I can't even tell you enough uh, how it just blesses my heart to see people faithfully uh, tuning in every single week. Um, for those who are cannot physically be with us, um, you are vital in helping us grow as well. And there's two ways that you can do that. The first way is the easiest way is if you're on Facebook and that's where you watch us live, if you could invite one or two friends to actually watch the service, uh, that would be every Sunday. That would be huge uh, because I can't tell you how many people I have heard from that said, I am so thankful that so-and-so took the time to reach out and think about me and invite me to, uh, to watch this service. Um, the great thing is if they don't like what we're about, they won't tune in or they could tune us out. Uh, but the, the fact of the matter is when you preach Christ uh, and, and you really reveal God's grace, it is life-changing. And it's not something that drives people away. They're drawn to it. Um, and, and it just stirs their soul, and the Holy Spirit will begin to do what, what the Holy Spirit can do and, and begin to, to reach people. What I would say about that is if you do invite someone, would you take a moment and type in a little personal note? It, it goes a long way. I can tell you I get invites all the time, and I don't pay attention to them because I don't want to play a uh, farm zombie game or mafia wars or like any of these other goofy things that people are inviting me to. Like I don't want anything to do with it. But if you'll take the time and you'll write a personal note, it says this means something to me. If you would go ahead and do that. And it also distinguishes that this is not some kind of spammy thing. Um, also follow up with them. Thank them for for taking the time to, uh, to, to check it out. Ask them what they thought about it. You know, it's a great way to have a dialogue uh, back and forth, and, and we will a, as well, but um, that's the first thing you can do. The second thing is maybe you're more of a go-getter. Maybe you say, I think there's something even more out there for me that I could do, even though I might be 2,000 miles away. Maybe you'd like to host a watching party, and you go, well, I don't know what in the world a watching party is. Well, let me show you. It's very simple. I've got a, a picture here that illustrates it. Now, this is what it looks like when we post a video. When the video is done, when we're done going live, if you go back to our Facebook page, you'll see this. Now, I have a yellow box here. It says Start Watch Party. If you were to click on that button, you could start a watch party right then. Now, I wouldn't recommend you do it on Sunday. You could if you want to. Um, what I would recommend is if you... Uh, Invite friends, just invite them, uh, and find some that are live, that are actually on Facebook. Invite those people. But a watch party is meant to be a little bit different. You could do it on Sunday, but I wouldn't recommend it. Instead, watch the service live, take down some notes. I put some screenshots up there with some key things. There's other things people like to jot down. So you've got a feel for where the message is going. Then set a day, like maybe Friday at 8 o'clock at night works great for you. Well, after you get done with your thing on Sunday, start inviting people. Say, hey, at Friday at 8, I'm going to host a watch party. Uh, the subject is blah, 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 and love for you to come. Start that watch party at 8. The video plays. You've already seen it, but you're ready for what comes. And the most powerful thing is when you'll start typing and interacting with those that you invited to watch. Uh, a key thing is when you're done, uh, have them subscribe to our channel. Have them uh, friend us on Facebook. Then they'll never miss a message. And it, it, it goes a long way. So those are two great ways that you could help us if you can't physically be here. So we need help in all areas. If we're going to reach, the go reach a million people with the gospel, we need people here helping us, and we need people out there uh, who can't get here but who are passionate about this. And I'm going to do my best to keep you informed. I'm not going to wait 10 years. You're like, where are we at on this meter? Oh, I have no idea. I'm going to do my best to keep celebrating these milestones, giving God the glory, thanking you all for your part in it, because I can't do it without you. And my goal is for the kingdom, the kingdom to grow, for more and more people to be saved, to come to know Jesus uh, as Lord and Savior. So I've covered a lot very quickly. 
I just want to wrap it up and say God is good all the time. I'm grateful for what He has blessed us with. I hope you'll take a moment and think about what you are grateful for of how He has blessed you. Um, and hopefully I'll see you all on Sunday at 11 as we stream another grace-filled message. I want to thank you for tuning in. If you are a friend of ours on Facebook, would you subscribe to our YouTube channel? It's in the description on this video, uh, youtube.com backslash words of grace. If you have subscribed to us on YouTube, but you have not friended us on Facebook, we are facebook.com backslash Acts 433 Church. Um, God's blessings to you all, and I will see you on Sunday at 11. Viewers like you make it possible for Acts 433 Church to continue to offer grace-filled messages every week. In the Old Testament, people would bring their sacrifice. And the priest would look at it, and when the people would come in, they would hand their sacrifice over to the priest. And you know, during that time, the priest wasn't looking at the person who brought the sacrifice. The priest looked at the sacrifice. And today, that's the same thing. God looks at us. He looks at the sacrifice, the perfect Lamb. If you have been blessed by today's message, you can help support our ministry by donating at acts433.com. Your donation is 100% tax deductible and will go towards sending the life-giving and life-transforming gospel of Jesus Christ to the nations. Acts 433 Church brings gospel to you. Church bringing